meteorologist Reed Kisselback live from Fort Drum, where researchers are launching weather balloons right up into the atmosphere on this day. Reed, that seems like a pretty interesting thing to do, launching weather balloons on the day of a solar eclipse. What's going on there? Yes, yeah, the great part behind that is there is a purpose behind it. We want to see what's happening to the atmosphere leading up to, during, and after the eclipse. So you Albany's team, uh, part of uh, 53 different teams across the country launching weather balloons, the Turbulent Eddies is their name, uh, have been launching balloons since 6 p.m. yesterday and been continuing to do so today. The last balloon launch is at 7 o'clock this evening. So they're definitely uh, they're high spirits. But uh, you can tell they're getting a little bit tired, but happy to be doing it as well. So uh, it was an impressive eclipse that we had here. You could tell a big drop in the temperature there, too. I'm curious to see how that data actually comes out. And so when we uh, were here at 4, we were on balloon launch number 29. I was told I get to share the honors of balloon launch number 30 here. So we're going to go on over and share the launch with Professor Dow from UAlbany as well. And uh, this is Jun Moying from the director, the director of the New York State Mesonet at Albany here. So hi, guys. Hi. Are we ready to launch? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd I'd hold it. you guys to do. Oh, I'm going to hold it. Yeah. Holding it tight. Hold it. Hold on. You got it? We're going to see. Oops. Hold on a second. Hold on. We're getting there. But what happens is when we let this go, this is going to rise very quickly up into the atmosphere. And uh, it's going to quickly gather all that data as it goes here and send it back to their site here where they are gathering and collecting that data to eventually share with NASA. NASA, fun fact, on the other side of this field, also launching some drones and gathering some data of their own. So pretty impressive for us here. And um, it's, been, it's been fun to watch all day today. If you haven't seen a weather balloon launch, you're going you're to appreciate this once we are ready to go here. Good to go? All right. Ready? Three? You come? All right, ready? Three, two, one, here we go. Off we go. Very cool. I used to do this in college too, actually, when I entered for the weather service. So this was a very fun throwback for me here. So uh, with that in mind, we'll talk to some of the members of the Turbulent Eddies uh, coming up in the next half hour. For now, we'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Uh, Reed, I got to know, those balloons, they send them up so high. Are they actually able to recover them, or is it just it's up and then they don't find it until it's all the way over in, I don't know, e Ecuador or something? So, actually, two points to that, Steve. So some of these can get very high, up to 100,000 feet, um, which is up into the stratosphere. When the balloon pops, the radios on usually has a, if found, please return to address. Uh, but the good news is it is also sending the data back. So normally you don't get it back. Sometimes if somebody finds it in the backyard, it gets put in the mail and sent on over. So it's actually pretty cool. Good to know. All right. There's a chance they might get it back. Thank you for that. Reed, looking forward to hearing from you again a little bit later.